have a seat. I can't emphasize to you enough how unique and groundbreaking this project really is. What makes it groundbreaking is the topic and who you're going to be working with. One of the things we try to do in eighth grade academic courses is we try to link them through a, a broader theme. We decided on a theme of resistance, how different people respond to challenging times. Have you all heard of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising? That becomes the ultimate symbol of uh, resistance, even though knowing that the resistors were going to lose in the end, that they were no match for the, the Nazi war machine. Poland was the largest area for Jews in Europe. Three million Jews. How many were killed during the Holocaust? Over 90%. Hundreds of thousands were already deported to death camps. And a group of children opened fire. Around a month or even more, they fought back. And the Nazis ultimately had to destroy the ghetto by burning it, building by building, because of the fighting that was taking place. You guys are going to be creating all of the characters for a graphic novel. How do you tell a story, an amazing heroic story, uh, through pictures and words? I felt that it critically important that we bring on board somebody who was a professional graphic novelist. This is Ken Krimstein. The, Hello. And he is going to be the uh, artist in residence. He's a professor at DePaul and a graphic novelist. First of all, I'm really delighted and honored to be here with you guys. I'm a cartoonist and a graphic novelist. This is my most recent book. It's a biography. Working with Ken Krimstein elevates it from a simple student project to something that, that can be seen as a professional book. We have a very ambitious project. It's not just a bunch of words with illustrations or pictures. Once we have the story and the basic character flow, then we can start really getting it beautiful. And each part of this is going to be about an eight-week section. I decided we need to focus on one character, one person, to tell this story. Mark Edelman. Mark Edelman. Mark Edelman. Mark Edelman, a true hero um, of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. But a real hero, like a flawed hero. You guys are going to know more about Mark Edelman than you ever thought you'd know. And believe me, that's a good thing. They interviewed Mark Edelman's son, Alexander Edelman, about his father. But there were many heroes during that time, and he don't speak to them alone. So he was one of them. He was a rebel, such a rebel. He gets kicked out of school after school after school. But ultimately, he was a man of peace who saw what tragedy happened to people during World War II. He'd seen it before, and he wanted to stop it from ever happening again. So Edelman has an arc. He has a growth. And I think you guys have to think about what does it mean to fight for your life? And to be able to convey that in the most clear manner and to have a group of 40-something students all working on this in tandem was in itself a, a learning process and a, a really a planning challenge. To help us with work on the, on the graphic novel, at the beginning of the year, we enlisted the aid of the Ink Factory. And so by using visuals to communicate your message, just like you guys are gonna do in your graphic novel, will help people understand your story that much better. And then what was wonderful is that Ken did come in and speak with our art classes. Each time he was able to introduce the idea of conveying the story in a visual manner. 
My hope is that we can at least get the students to learn the rudiments of the language and rhetoric of comics and make a coherent character-based story. And I think we've identified um, a good architecture or structure for the story. The first is this notion of a carousel. Right outside the ghetto wall, there was a, an, an operating carousel. And as the ghetto was burning and people were jumping out of windows on fire, in some cases, they were pulling human ash out of their hair as they're riding this carousel. It represented indifference and the insanity that went with the war. And it continued to spin. And in Mark Edelman's life, it continued to spin afterwards. And the carousel, right, that metaphor of the carousel, is literally going to spin the story from act to act. I'm going to ask you guys to think about um, what it was like for you to be five. One of the things that I applaud is that it's not an easy topic. It's not a, it's not a light topic. And how you would have felt, it's a sad thing, if you found out that your father had died. And I think one of the things that makes graphic novels or comics so powerful is that they can address issues that maybe would be difficult to address just verbally. And I really love this panel in particular for how they showed, the students showed him as a baby and the father is, is alive but already unwell. And then as he gets a little bit older, you see the image of the father getting fainter and fainter and the balloon for the birthday sort of drooping a little because, you know, he knows his father is ill. And then when the father is just leaving the frame, and then later a scene where he goes to visit the father's grave. This project is like special and cool because we kind of get to work on it in all of our classes. The graphic novel um, involved tremendous collaboration. To bring together different subject areas to help make learning stick. Students can see that it's not, it's not a, something that's inherent to a particular subject, but it's something that's life-worthy. These ideas are out there and they touch everything. So in Reading Workshop, we did a genre study, the genre of graphic novels. So each student read two to three graphic novels and they took elements that they observed in these mentor texts and tried to apply that into their own storytelling. So it gave them a lot of ideas and inspired them in a lot of ways and they wanted to showcase that to their families. So what we did is we invited parents to come in for a family book club night. And as part of the book club, they read different graphic novels and then they led discussions with their parents who were also assigned to read these graphic novels. Where and that kind of symbolized the leader like being everywhere and watching everyone. And I just wanted to hear you guys' take. I just wanted to hear super creepy. And their parents just sat there and were mesmerized. They viewed their children in a totally different way. And moreover, they learned. They learned together. It was powerful. Like when I took a step back from the book, as like we're teenagers, you, you have to like start to form like what you are gonna believe. Another element of the graphic novel was partnering with their tech classes. We had students for the first time using augmented reality and virtual reality. So for AR, they took pages from the graphic novel they were making and they found a part of the page that needed some kind of supplement. For my augmented reality, I put tools over the uh, socialists. We talk about 21st century learning a lot. These skills are fundamental to start at a young age. So we think in pictures. Picture is worth a thousand words. That's great. I know what's happening even if I don't read the words. Awesome. And then when I saw it with the virtual reality, I flipped out even more. But, you know, I love it. This is their native language, and I do know from a lot of what I've been doing that there's a lot of suspicion. You can't tell a real story with it, uh, and that clearly isn't the case. To be honest, I really like this project. I've like developed a different understanding about like how you can learn um, 
visually. Traditionally in schools we recognize those students that are great test takers, great at memorization, great at writing, but we don't necessarily recognize those students who think in a different way. So I think that as an artist who's going to go to art school next year that it's a very interesting thing for me to do. Well, I think it's really important when I when I have an idea of that I I get it right. That's good. You know, walking in the ghetto, the buildings are all falling apart, but it says there's like two really nicely dressed people. Uh -huh. Not everyone in the ghetto was starving. Um, wow. Like, we learned in history how that's very powerful. It's human nature to push people to the outside and we learned about the other which is someone who's not really included and this is an example of a really intense version of that. This contrast in the ghetto is is going to be jarring for people like in the Jewish community. People have to know what really happened. Obviously this way of portraying history in art is, is new to me. And I think going into it, we were both expecting that we were gonna have to do some very like complex artwork, but figured out that we could make it as simple as we want, but still being able to portray what we wanted to in a way that made sense. And being extremely meaningful, which is what the story really is. We've all worked really hard on this project. I thought they just rose to the challenge. The writing and the drawing and the collaboration was very, very impressive. Regular people don't change the course of history. It's, it's the people who take a stand, sometimes completely going against the convention. But I also wanted to warn them, understand that with that choice to resist, there are consequences that can follow from that. So make sure that this is something that you truly believe in and that it's something right and that it's something good.